go. Going live and yes, we are live, Freda. Um, I'm just gonna make sure this is all up and running and I will just say hello uh, as we get started here. If we haven't met for folks watching, my name is Julie Hirschberg. I'm a neurologic physical therapist and the um, owner and founder of Reactive Therapy and Wellness in the Los Angeles area, and very, very excited to be joined by Freda. And this is actually our first time meeting. <laughs> so I've been particularly excited because I've heard just, I, I get to meet with our team, we get to talk about cases, and I've heard a lot about Freda. And everybody has shared, oh, you have to talk to Freda, you have to have her share her story. And so it's like at last, I've been anticipating this for a while. So I just want to thank you too for taking the time and energy and courage to share too. Um, we were just talking and Freda is fit, just finishing actually um, an integrated program kind of tapering off of uh, services um, in our functional neurologic disorders program. And she's been so kind um, to share a little bit about herself and experience. I think I learned the most um, from people like you um, more than any course, more than anything, any book uh, that I could ever learn from. So this this is, is something that's so fun for me to do. Um, and so Freda, for, for me, for, for folks that are watching this video, I wonder if you could start with sharing a little of your story um, before you came to Reactive and kind of maybe what brought you to Reactive too. Sure, well, thank you so much for having me, I appreciate it. Um, I started having what now I know is seizures back in 2005. Um, I didn't have the words. I didn't know what was happening. I just knew that when I was walking, my legs would give out and I'd be on the ground. Um, so I didn't have the words to tell doctors what was really happening. I was dismissed and um, told I was psycho, told I needed to go to psychiatry and um, that it wasn't happening, that I just tried to get attention, all sorts of negative comments. Um, I finally found a lifestyle medical doctor um, right before that, in 2019, I guess it was. Um, and I told them, and they also had never account encountered anything like this, so they didn't really know what to do. They sent me to another neurologist who told me the exact same thing. Um, so I started researching a little bit. Um, I found out about TD, product dyskinesia, because I also had leg movements. Um, and I had been on health for 14 years and then respiratory for another 10. Um, and I was, was not tapered off of Haldol. It was an overnight off of one and onto the other. And that's when my seizures began. So that's why I thought the seizures were due to the TARDA. I never got diagnosed with TARDA because doctors just didn't clean it. Um, so I started, after I started researching that, I decided I was going to um, try to get into UCLA Movement Clinic because I'd heard good things about them. But my insurance, I have an HMO, Medicare, you know, my insurance uh, denied me. Um, and then I appealed it and they approved it, but they didn't tell me that the appeal was approved until two weeks before it expired. So I was able to get on to the UCLA waiting list, but that was a six to nine month waiting list and the insurance to extend my appeal. So I decided I was going to Sorry. I decided I was going to um, uh, change insurances. So that was this January. I was going to change insurance. And I'm like, please close the door here. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, I decided I was going to change insurances in January. And um, in December, like December 22nd, I get a call from UCLA that I'm and I told him, I says, but now I don't have insurance because I'm changing in January. So my my doctor went ahead and did a um, did a 
uh, referral again for the new insurance. To my surprise, three days later, I got an approval with my new insurance. 10 days later, I had an appointment. It was like a miracle to me. <laughs> It's a uh, miracle. It was a miracle. Uh, it was everything I hoped for. So I went there with my son. My son grew up there. Um, she spent a good hour and a half listening, observing, and examining something that no other neurologist ever did. Um, she said that she felt I had FMD. She gave me a website, the neurosymptoms.org, told me to look it up and look up my symptoms. And when I got home, I did. And I read them to my daughter and she kept saying, oh my God, mom, that's you. Oh my God, mom, that's you. Mm -hmm. So then I realized that exactly what was happening. So um, they, she wanted to do some testing just in case it could be something else. She, tested, she did an MRI, she did an EEG, everything came out normal, which is what was expected. Um, I do have a bit of dystonia and akathisia, um, but the main issue was the FND and the C, that I had FND with bugs. And I had never heard of that before. I'd never given it. I had no idea what it was. Um, so then they, she, re, she referred me to React. And when I got to, re, when you know, I researched it and I you know, had my consultation with you guys, and you know they were so kind and so loving, and I just I really wanted to go, but again I was worried about my. I thought, oh god, this is never going to prove this. Um, but and they didn't. At the beginning. They said, well, we use single piece agreement. We're not going to do that. And then Reactive got involved. They got the single piece agreement for me. The insurance says, well, we're only going to pay a small portion. I couldn't afford the balance, so Reactive took over. They called. They made him agree to pay 100%. It was amazing. I just don't know how. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what a what a story. I think it rings true for a lot of folks who, Frida, have had to jump through hoops um, and a lot of um, just lack of understanding from other providers and and things and it, it really speaks to why I tell a lot of people you need to see a specialist like you did at UCLA a movement disorder specialist who really understands tardive dyskinesia and um, other things like dystonia and functional neurologic disorders and could put together a full picture um, and our team it's funny because I just got out of a meeting talking about this our team um, has just done a tremendous job. We've gotten almost um, a third of folks, it's very hard to work with insurance companies, but a third of folks um, able to get an agreement with their insurance company because there's not a lot of programs. And I'm so glad that you were able to, to, to do that and, and that our team was able to do that with you. I think that is, huge um so just thank you for sharing those pieces because i know they are part of kind of a frustrating story i'm sure um and very stressful that's only a small portion <laughs> yeah i know i know i know only a small portion too um and um i think one of the other things is you are you, you you're not in our backyard but you are in california and so you didn't have to come across the country like a lot of folks do um which which is great but it's also not right right next door <laughs> to you um and so tell me a little bit about the um the process for you for therapy um i know you worked with our whole team and maybe you can share a little bit about what what you kind of have learned and gained in each of the therapies and kind of as a whole um, man, so much. Um, I remember the very first appointment I had, and I had most of my appointments on Zoom. I did go to the to the Torrance office three times, and my insurance even provided transportation for that, which was like amazing. So, uh, because it's like an hour and a half, two hour drive each way. Um, so the first thing I remember, my very first appointment with Randy, the first thing she said to me was, "We believe." I'm getting emotional because that in itself 
was everything. Um, I've learned how to, and so much, I, you know, I've learned so many tools to help, like when my seizures do come, I've learned how to prevent them. I've learned how to, um, what to do during them. I've learned how to recover faster after them. Um, I've learned how to live my life and not be in fear 24 7. Because that's what was happening. I was afraid every minute of every day. So um, they've been amazing. Um, the, uh, this is probably not conducive to my video, but like I hadn't been able to get into my walk in tub for probably five years because it's a high step up and a high step down, and my bathroom is very small and I didn't feel safe. So Leanne, my OT therapist, taught me how to be safe in the bathroom. And now I'm taking my showers. Normal people. It's, it's a big deal, right? It's a big <laughs> deal. Yes, it's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, she showed me what to, what to get for the for the bathroom so that I had things to hold on to. And she showed me how to get in and out. I mean, just everything that in the kitchen. I'm not good in the kitchen. I'm stressed in the kitchen. She showed me how to rearrange the kitchen, how to rearrange where the microwave is so that everything is really close and easy so that I don't feel the stress now. I can actually make something in the kitchen and not have a seizure doing it. Mm -hmm. um, just so many things. Um, I'm now starting to walk with a cane, which I've been in a wheelchair since 2013. Wow. And I'm starting to walk with a cane. I mean, I'm not doing it by myself yet. I'm still learning, but it's there. And I'm working with a trainer at 24 Hour Fitness who actually is in his final year to be a PTA. He knows how to handle PT patients. And he's been working also with Chelsea to uh, work on what I should work on there. And now um, this Wednesday, I did something that I never thought I'd ever do again. So I walked clean around the, the entire 24 hour fitness in a circle without holding on to any, without having any device, just walking. Around. Wow. And Even I, without the cane. Without the cane. I was, I was holding like a round cylinder thing. And the only reason why I was doing that was that if I got tired, I could stand it on end and rest. Okay. But other than that, and every, I think twice around the thing, I asked if I could hold it and he gave me a thing to hold, which was no support, physical support, but emotional support. Yeah, yeah. That is huge. And you, did I hear you right, um, Freda, when you said that you had been in a wheelchair primarily since 2013? I still am, but I'm learning not to rely on it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is really great. And I hear from you too, you've really, you've faced a lot of fears. You were living in a lot of fear. Um, and um, you have made some great strides in that, um, which is which is humongous. I think the shower is really big, <laughs> right? Like, Me too. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, oh, being able to shower or bathe as you want. Um, people don't know how much they take for granted. You know, I mean, that's something most people take for granted. Right. And right. I don't take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you mentioned in that story uh, too, and sharing that you had um, been having seizures and those had, it sounds like those have decreased and you kind of recognize um, the things that might trigger them, but also how to manage them in the moment. Yeah, I used to, I mean, like when I got my COVID vaccine, for instance, when I'm ill, that's when I get seizures, I think the most. That's one of my biggest triggers, but I have others besides that. 
But when I got the COVID vaccines, I had seizures for 18 hours straight for the second shot and the booster 12 hours straight. Um, mm -hmm. Luckily, my children were here to help. Um, after that, like I would have seizures for, you know, a couple hours or whatever. And I finally decided that, okay, I'm just going to sit in my chair and allow my body to do its thing. I'm not going to fight it. And that was, a, that was really helpful. This was before coming to react. I just mm -hmm. decided on my own that I just need to let my body do what it needs. And um, so sometimes I would sit in my recliner there for 12 hours straight until I felt like I could get up and not seize because I was too mm -hmm. And that hasn't happened. I actually have not had a major seizure since I had COVID in May. And that was the first time I've been had COVID. So I mean, I, I got sick, um, but I I didn't have you know potential um, seizures where they came and go after there at all the time. I had five seizures, but they were minor. They were small, mm. and I was able to manage them, and I wasn't afraid of them. I, I sat in my chair. I calmed myself down. I did grounding. I you know listen to meditation, whatever I needed to do to calm my body and allow myself to get out of that. Yeah, yeah, it's a boy, like you're, you're an expert, Fred. <laughs> you're an expert. I hear, I hear these things. I was like, you could be teaching the class on, on, on seizures, but it sounds like you've really learned a lot about your nervous system. Uh, you knew these things coming in, how it might respond to a vaccine, how it might respond to an infection or illness, but now you have more of how you can respond to right. to that. That's a and lot, a lot of, of a lot of the stuff that I did with Chelsea was sensory because the movements that I have in the way sometimes cause my seizure because I get so nervous about the movements that my brain goes into fight flight, fight, fright, what is it? fight, flight, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, uh, we've been doing a lot of sensory stuff because Chelsea was saying how my legs really don't know where I am in space. That's why the movements are so strong. So I mean, the the sensory stuff we, that we've done has calmed my legs down so much. I mean, it's just been amazing. It's wow. Yeah, stuff that I never would have thought to do, and they're doing it. It's yeah yeah so you're discovering which which is right a lot of times those sensory pieces go unnoticed or untested and you know it sounds like chelsea was able to see oh well no wonder your legs are having a lot of involuntary movement they they don't they're not getting your brain's not getting good sensory information about where they are in space and so retraining that you have it sounds like you've gained some re control of your legs Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that that is really, really huge. And now you're like speaking my love language of the pie, <laughs> like <laughs> the sensory, the sensory piece of the pie um, sounds like one of, you know, one of your take homes. Um, but you also mentioned other things like the grounding and meditation. And so some of that like autonomic pieces of the pie um, have also been really helpful for you um yeah that that is great you also shared so your team had physical therapy occupational therapy psychology right and you shared from the very first day meeting brandy just kind of having that belief it sounds like you really worked towards um towards your fears uh, you worked into them, right? I, I should say it's not like you were getting rid of them, um, but working into them. And was that a big piece, um, the psychology component for you? I think all three working together was the key. I'm, mm -hmm. I've always been a team player, number one. And so working in my career, that was my, I always loved a team. And so having this team and being the center of that team was instrumental. It, it just, yeah. it, because they were talking to each other in real time as I was doing things. 
and giving me feedback and celebrated my successes in real school, which was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I've been a part of those successes. That's what I love about, I mean, our team, you are the center of the team. The people that work with our team are the center. And and then as a larger team, you're you're also kind of center of the reactive universe. Like I get to hear the wins, we get to celebrate, we get to problem solve if we get kind of stuck. And I love how you said you you like to be that team player. Um and I do think that's a little bit of the secret sauce is that whole team um really and coming each, each together. Component, each component was so important to the other. You know, they each mm -hmm. gave me tools, but they worked, the tools worked together. Yeah. So yeah. They're all three very important. Yeah, I like that. I and I, of course I agree with you, all three very, very important um pieces when it comes to understanding these complex disorders of brain and body and 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 how they're connected um so people hear pt and they don't understand this was not just the normal pt mm -hmm. this i mean i've been to pt for umpteen years and it did nothing because all they did was the same exercises every day. and goodbye see you mm -hmm. next time type of thing this was totally different it, it wasn't just PT, it wasn't just OT, it wasn't psychology, it was a group effort. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad you shared that perspective because I do think for others with functional neurologic disorders, they may say, oh, I tried PT, that doesn't work. Or I tried psychology, that doesn't work. Or I tried OT and that doesn't work. And, and, and quite frankly, I've been the PT working by myself and it didn't really work, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I've been that, but, um, that, you know, I think when you bring those pieces together and you're right, it's not in a traditional, um, I think I, I, maybe there is no traditional PT, but it's not really just, it's not exercise or it's not just like uh, manual therapy or something like that. I think that people traditionally think of for physical therapy. Um, you did a great job of describing, for example, the sensory piece that um, that our, our physical therapists, but also the other therapists bring in um, together. Um, Another thing that I think was a really uh, impactful for me was be, learning how to describe it to others. Oh. because my family too dismissed me for years. And I don't know if they thought that, you know, I was just trying to get attention or, you know, stuff like that. It, they just didn't understand what was going on. And when I got, I mean, Leanne wrote me up like a script thing of what to tell people so that in a way that they could understand. So, to me, that was really impactful because now my family's on board. Huge, Freda, huge. I love, I love that idea of the script too. I know we share those things and we talk about those, but everybody kind of needs something different, right? And when you, you know, when you have a, a family, it's really important for them to understand. And and something like this is not um it's not super simple to understand, to be honest, right? <laughs> and there, there can be a lot of misunderstanding when you have um, symptoms that are intermittent or you have symptoms that are hard to explain. Um, it, or they it never see really them. Confusing. Because or a lot of times I had these seizures when I was alone and then I would call them like, come help. So it was oh. like, they didn't see the actual seizure until my daughter moved in with me and she moved in in November and at Christmas, I had seizures to the point where she had to tie me into my wheelchair so that I wouldn't fall back because my oh. seizures pushed me forward. And then she started uh, and researching and more researching mm. until we found answers. So, mm. I mean, if they don't see what's going on and only hear what you're telling them and you don't have the right words, tell them what's happening, it's misunderstood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and it's hard for yourself to understand what's happening too. So yeah, so you have gained quite a bit and your family has gained from an education perspective, from a knowledge perspective. Um, I'm curious too, because I know Freda with your history, you've had symptoms for a very long time it can be frustrating and you shared in your story frustrating discouraging dismissed um by by people um but now now you're seeing changes you are getting better i'm wondering you know if you could go back in time and tell younger freda something or if you could tell other people who might are also be feeling discouraged that they can't get better what what would you share with them oh gosh um i probably would have advocated more for myself because in the mm -hmm. beginning i didn't i you know i didn't know what to say or what to do to make doctors believe me so i just kind of okay and i left the office um like somebody else yeah i didn't really advocate for what i really needed mm -hmm. and once my daughter moved in and she was like instrumental in getting me to advocate for myself i also uh went to the MEND program that you see at um, Loma Linda, which that also, I, that was before Reactive. That really taught me mind-body connection because I was totally disconnected from my mm -hmm. mind. My mind was totally disconnected. I didn't know what I was feeling, how I was feeling, why I was feeling. And um, so MEND helped me there. And then it just flew from there. So yeah. between men, well, first it was lifestyle, which they finally, finally a doctor that didn't believe in meds, believed in changing your lifestyle, which was mm -hmm. great. And I'm still with them. Um, and then men, then uh, advocating to myself with my insurance, then react, or then UCLA, then reactive. So it's been a journey, but an amazing. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely a journey. Um, and I'm curious what you might share with other clinicians. So we share these videos every week in a newsletter to clinicians who are also really trying to understand and help people with FND. What, what might you share with them? Don't dismiss your patients. Mm. Believe research, look for answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, listen, believe. Yeah, that was one of the things that you shared when you first met Brandy um, and from our team. I mean, it, it's like an actually like a mantra. It's what I teach other clinicians is to believe their patients. You know what's so funny? I read your, I read your articles every week. Right? Every week I read them and I, take them in because they resonate with me with a lot of stuff that, that you say that's happened to you. The last one or a couple weeks ago, maybe we wrote about dizziness. And when I was in the tub washing my hair for the first time in the tub, I put my head back and closed my eyes and I got dizzy. And I didn't know how to describe it to my psychologist um, when I had an appointment with her, but I said, I kind of felt floaty. I've never used that word before. I didn't even know it was in my vocabulary, but floaty meant. But I used the word floaty. And the very next week, you came out with the dizziness article. And it said a lot of people say they feel floaty. I'm like, what? <laughs> what timing there? <laughs> it, it's been like that all the way through. The timing like that has been all the way through. Hmm. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny, I write a lot of those, because I'm listening to you and other people that are sharing what they're experiencing. And then I want to know and learn more um, about about why um, I'm a one of those annoying why people and why and why and why. So, um, so, yeah, but I think what you're sharing there, too, is also so valuable for clinicians how much we can learn from you, from, from listening, listening to little words like that, like I feel floaty. Um, 
you know, when you tell me that, that by the way, it's so common, the, the head back, eyes closed, floaty feeling in the shower, um, like there's things that we can learn about um, from that and, um, and be able to help people regain their shower <laughs> um, ability, um, which again, I'm just celebrating for you. Um, and um, what would, what might you say, we hear from a lot of folks, so we, just like with you, we meet them, they have questions about our programs, um, and they're, they're unsure to take that leap. They've been disappointed and discouraged before with other treatments and things like that. What might you say to somebody that was on the fence and is uncertain? I'd say don't give up hope. Believe in that. Believe. Yeah, it goes a long way, right? Yeah, especially in, if, if you're in a discouraged place and feel um, like there isn't, isn't a lot of hope. Um, and that's why I thank you for sharing your story. Um, and, and for most people who've shared their stories, they've been there, right? In a place where just like, I don't think this would get better. Um, and um, through, for you, through a lot of tenacity and a lot of perseverance and a lot of resilience you, you have. Um, the thing I would say is that if you do go to reactive, it's a lot of hard work. It's not something that you can just go to the appointment and forget about. You have to work it deal. So you have to be willing to do that if you want to get back. Yeah. Yeah. I will say amen to that. It is not, we're, we're not a place of like, a, uh, it's not a passive process, right? And I think you're speaking to that. And folks that join us or we get to join them on this journey, the journey is their journey. It's your journey, right? And we get to work and help you find some of the missing puzzle pieces and build up resources and tools, but it's still your journey. You're the one going to 24-hour fitness and pushing yourself a second time around that floor, right? Um, and um, we'll we'll help build those tools so that you can you can do that. Um, but yeah, that that's a really great message. And so I guess lastly, what is what are you doing now, Fred? I know you're you're working out with a trainer, uh, which is awesome. I know Chelsea's kind of collaborating with a lot of what our team does, collaborate with the, the other folks. You're wrapping up physical therapy, I think, right? Yeah. And I think I have yeah. one more appointment. And I'm okay. dreading not coming anymore just because you guys give me so much, so much insight as well as out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about what, like, what's happening for you? You shared at the beginning some of the things that you're doing now that you weren't doing. Um, but what's happening for you life-wise now? Um, well, I'm treasurer of a nonprofit, and we've had a lot of challenges. So I'm working very hard on that. Um, I'm also planning on uh, applying to a state board appointment for disabilities. There's an opening, a volunteer opening position on a disability board. I would love to be on that because there isn't enough resources for people with that are disabled. Um, I'm enjoying life. I'm going to dinner and temple. I haven't been to temple in probably four years. Um, I'm trying to put away my fears, like any fear that I have. I, I try to analyze why am I fearful? Is there a reason? Is there a good reason to be fearful or is it just an inaccurate thought? Um, so I'm doing that a lot. Um, I analyze now how I feel and why I feel and I connect my body and mind more than I ever have in my life. That's huge. That is huge, yeah back to temple after four years, going out, 
um, this volunteer position, state board position, huge advocacy, all of all of those, like such such purpose in your life um, that that I hear, which is amazing. And you're you're also changing the world for other people. So also also really really great. Um, I'm also on, uh, going to several FND support groups. I'm hoping to facilitate uh, at some point. Yes, yes, you're one of um, the the first folks. We started uh, a peer support group for people with FND after they finish or as they're finishing a program with us, and that just started in the last few months. Um, and the very and first so meeting I went to, one of the ladies that was in there was actually from my city, Riverside. So we met for the first time in first class. We went to lunch together. Oh my gosh. So that's amazing to, that. to meet somebody with the same uh, condition going to Reactive together. She's done with Reactive, but she went. And so, and we're in the support group together. So it was amazing to meet each other in person. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> I didn't know that, Freda. I love, love, love that. And that is something I think also that's so important, like the community aspect um, of, of being on this journey and knowing you're not alone, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, like I said, I learn more <laughs> from from chatting with um with the great great people that we get to work with at reactive i'm so so thankful freda that you um have have joined us um and trusted us um as well and um also just have shared here live uh so appreciate it uh, we'll share this video. We'll share the recording. It'll come in the newsletter <laughs> that you you read too, and um, we'll we'll continue to share the hope for for people um, with F and D and other neurologic disorders. Um, but I want to thank you. I really appreciate you guys. You've changed my life. Yeah. Well, and you likewise have changed ours. So thank you. So so much, Freda. Uh, appreciate you, and I know we'll get to get to stay in touch as you're part of the ongoing pieces of, of Reactive. And um, yeah, thank you again. Thank you. All right. Have a good rest of your day and weekend. You too. Okay. Bye, Freda.